I spent 150 hours building a villain's lair for Dream. No, not Dream the YouTuber. It would be kinda weird if he was just sitting in a massive castle watching football games. Dream the villain from Dream SMP, however, could use a place to hatch his evil schemes from. First, I planned out the build with some colorful wireframes. For the exterior, there's going to be the main castle, but also a few outbuildings, such as a stables, blacksmith's house, watchtowers, and a lookout point. I'm also going to include an archery range and combat training grounds so that he can hone his skills. But that's not all. The build will have a full interior, including a throne room, a laboratory where he can conduct his experiments, a transformation of the disc vault, and a dungeon whose design is inspired by Pandora's vault. There may also be a Dream XD reference somewhere in there. It's time to start filling things in. We're going for a mix-up of a typical castle with some steampunk elements. To be honest, I'm a huge fan of the steampunk style, especially when it comes to classic cogs and gears. However, I didn't include this style just because I liked it. Clockwork ties into a very important aspect of this build, but we'll find out about that later. In order to match Dream's character, I used a green gradient for the roof, incorporating the signature lime green color. I wasn't happy with some of my original material choices, so I went back and changed the block palette. My laptop's too old and low-tech to use World Editor to speed things up, which means every single block you see had to be placed by hand. Redoing whole sections of the build might have been difficult, but the results were worth it. Now, Dream hardly has the time to build an enormous castle when he has a server to terrorize, so the idea for this build is that the castle was long abandoned when he found it, moved in, and fixed the place up. Once we get to the interior, there'll be more hints about the people who originally built this structure and why. Their reasons tie into Dream SMP lore. I continue filling in more of the structure, then start working on the arches around the base of the castle. I move on to the front entrance. First, I build a staircase. After all, the front door needs to actually be reachable from the ground. I curve the bottom of the staircase around to give it a more organic shape. Next, I have to terraform the river a little. There's going to be another door underneath the main entrance with paths in either direction, so I can't have people going for a swim as soon as they step outside. Here's what I've completed so far. The castle is starting to take shape, but I still need to fill in the outbuildings, such as the stables, towers, and do all the detailing. Time to finish the rest of the castle's roofs, starting over the main entrance and then moving on to the clock tower. I do the whole thing in green terracotta first so that I can get the shape right before adding in the gradient. As you can see, it took a while to figure the shape out and make sure everything was symmetrical. Building circular roofs by hand is pretty tricky, but eventually it came together. To bridge the gap between the darker green and the lime green, I used melon blocks. This was a bit of an unusual choice, but they're the only block that really combines the lights and darks of the two different shades of green. The clock tower now felt a little imbalanced and top-heavy, so I quickly added some flying buttress supports to the bottom before filling out the small tower that springs from the roof of the clock tower. This feature was inspired by Dumbledore's office from Harry Potter, as that structure is sort of several towers stacked onto each other. Now I finish the smaller tower's roof. I finish off the smaller tower with some dark oak framing and windows, using warp trap doors to complement the green in the roof. Then I add in the framing for the clock tower itself, before moving on to the most important part, the actual clock. I wanted to incorporate lots of intricate details into the design, so it looked like the stone had been hand carved. I then experimented with a few different blocks, including the new copper as an accent color. The first clock that I built actually ended up being too small. It was dwarfed by both the size of the tower and the size of the castle itself, so I went back and fixed it. Now it'll stand out as a main part of the build, even from a distance. Next, I went around the sides, using the deep slate to contrast with the stone bricks and sticking to that hand-carved look. I tried out the idea of having windows on the clock tower, perhaps later showing off some cogs and gears inside, but ultimately decided to stick with the carvings instead. It's time to add some steampunk elements to the build. My plan for this part was to have several giant gears sticking out of the side. I start by building the gear away from the castle before embedding it into the wall. I then add the mechanism that turns the gear and anchors it to the building before moving on to the next one. By building each gear in the open first, I have plenty of room to fiddle with the shape, size, and design before moving it to its final place. I mentioned earlier that the clockwork symbolism ties in with this castle's backstory. It has to do with the people who originally built this place and their own beliefs. The structure here will be the laboratory, and once we do its interior, the importance of the clockwork will be fully revealed. This final gear is the biggest of the bunch, and is mostly solid so that it can serve as a backdrop for the other two. I spend a while trying to come up with some detailed patterns to decorate it, before moving it over. 
Then I add some extra supports to the anchor mechanisms, since the gears were feeling a bit heavy compared to the wall they were attached to. I finished filling in the gear and carving the details. Right now it's all blackstone brick, but I'll come back later to mix in some different blackstone variants and give it more texture. Once I have this gear all complete, I build the final anchor mechanism for it, completing our first clockwork detail of the build. Now that the gears are done, I start detailing the exterior of the laboratory and putting in the windows. I'm going to use green and lime green stained glass for most of the windows on this build in order to match the roof. This section of the castle is inspired by the Tudor style, since it's one of my favorite architectural styles. Around the back, I copy the same window design before adding some smaller windows and a circular window at the top. Then I take the smaller window design and add it along the final side of the structure. I head back to the front of the build and start work on the front door. I want to make something large and imposing that fits well with the castle, while still having the regular vanilla Minecraft doors in it. That way, you can still go in and out. I put in some windows with the green stained glass and work on detailing the flat walls, adding crenellations to the two side balconies. I need to finish off the front of the castle, so I carve out a large four-point window. I add in a couple more windows either side and etch some details into the stone brick. Next, I add in some support pillars to help hold up the structure before putting in the doors that lead to the balconies. Now for another steampunk feature to this build, I wanted to put a couple of large copper pipes on the roof. This helps balance the asymmetry of the gears. Plus, it's a bit more interesting than just your typical chimney stacks. I texture with some granite before moving on to another tower. This tower is detached from the main castle, but I'm going to bridge that gap with, well, a bridge. For now though, I just work on getting the tower to the right height and shape. As you can see, the wireframe I made for this part ended up being way too big, so I settle on a smaller design. I figure out the details while I'm building up so that I know what each section is going to look like. I redo the very top and roof a few times until I find a shape that I like, then add in the roof gradient. After that, I finish detailing the other sides of the tower. I come back to the bottom and make it a bit slimmer, then I move on to making the bridge. At first I add in deep slight accents, but then decide to change it out for a stone brick design. It's time to figure out the sides of the castle. I add some deep slight archways along the top so that it matches the base of the build. Then I put in alternating large windows and a carved design to fill in the remaining blank wall space. I'm going to copy this pattern almost exactly to the other side as well. However, I need to change up the design a bit in order to fit a door out onto the tower bridge. I combine two of the carved sections together since the bridge would end up intersecting a window if I use the exact same layout. I add in two small crescent windows on either side of the door before detailing the rest of the wall. The castle is going to have four floors total, not including the towers. These giant windows only look in on one of the floors, so there will be plenty of room for some epic interiors later on. To complete the exterior of the main castle, I added the last two doorways out into the balconies up top. For the larger door, I include some slime blocks. Their transparency is similar to windows, and the green matches the other green elements of the build. It's finally time to start working on some of the castle's outbuildings. First, I tackle the blacksmith's house. Dream would need a forge to get his weapons and armor from, so this is a perfect addition. Similar to the laboratory above, this building is inspired by the Tudor style. I utilize lots of wooden beams to frame the build and section off the walls. I use a mixture of spruce, logs, and planks for the roof, then go around and add in some decorative details. Once I'm finished with that, I come around the side and start work on a water wheel to power the forge. This naturally generated waterfall seems like the perfect spot for it. I try out a few different block types before settling on the final design. We may now have a blacksmith's building, but it's still missing a forge. I make a cupboard area to protect it from the rain, then quickly lay out the foundations for the forge. The water wheel is just hanging over dry land, so I go back and start carving out a small stream. I flood the area, then texture the banks with dirt and brown terracotta to give them a muddy look. After this, I move on to the stables. The first thing I need to do is make a wall. My idea for the structure is to have the stables walled off so that horses can freely roam around it while still being contained. I extend the arch design from the base of the castle around here, using the same deep slate gradient to decorate. I then copy this design to the interior of the wall as well. Now the stables are very secure. I go to the front and start working on the entrance, using another archway design and adding crenellations to the top. I finish with some gates to keep the horses in. On top of the wall, I create a couple of wooden shelters over the stairs leading up. I then add two lookout platforms on each front corner, so that it's easy to spot anyone approaching the gates. 
This way, no one is slipping by undetected. Now I can begin making the stables itself. Like the blacksmith's house, this building will also be in the Tudor style. Sticking to only a few styles like this helps the entire build feel more unified and consistent. I add in the details, and then carve out some windows before making a wooden awning on either side. I plan to have pens for the horses under here, where they can be in fresh air but still sheltered from the rain. Then I move on to building the top section. Having structure sectioned off like this is another great way to add interest to your overall build. I'll return to the stables later to detail it with hay bales and such. I need to finish up the last few outbuildings, so I start on the watchtowers. I figured with all the people out to get Dream, he'd likely be a bit paranoid and want to keep watch at all times to make sure his hideout wasn't discovered. I also really want to utilize some of this extreme savanna terrain, so there's going to be a path winding up the mountain, from the first watchtower to the second, and all the way up to the lookout on top. I match this tower's design to the rest of the castle with the stone brick, deep slate, and dark oak logs. At first I put in green glass for the windows, but later I come back and change this for grey glass, since these buildings are supposed to be more functional than decorative. For the second watchtower, I use almost the exact same design. However, this one is taller, so I have to change things around a little, elongating some parts and adding in more windows. Inside each tower is a spiral staircase that will either take you to the top of the tower, or you can choose to go out a side door located near the top that continues to the path up the mountain. For the final building, I make a lookout point located at the highest part of this extreme savanna biome. Unlike the watchtowers, I did want this structure to be a bit more decorative, so I add in that green gradient roof from the castle below. Now I just need to make the actual path up to the lookout point. I put in some staircases and small bridges, then I carve a mineshaft into the side of the mountain that leads to a naturally generated crevice. The path will wind through this cavern on the way up. Once I've laid out the trail in this section, I go back to the mineshaft opening I made and build a larger bridge over the rocky ravine. I then continue up the mountain, building a staircase to summit the final cliff. As I said I would earlier, I return to the stables to put in the decorations. I build a small wagon, add in stacks of hay bales, make some water troughs, and carve out a few paths so that the yard looks well worn. Over by the blacksmith's house, I put in a small bridge across the stream, then get to work on the paths here. I take this path all the way around to the stables and connect it to the trail leading up the mountain. After this, I start making some custom trees and bushes, trying to figure out what design I'm going to go with later when I surround the castle with its own custom forest. Before I can put down the other trees, I need to add two more features to the castle's grounds. I start by making the archery range, giving Dream a place to practice with his bow. Then I move on to the combat arena. One of the things Dream is most known for is his skills with PvP, so I make sure there's plenty of area to move around. Now it's back to the trees. To be honest, this is the part I was dreading the most in this project. Building custom trees wouldn't be so bad if I made a much smaller build. It also wouldn't have been too much of a challenge if I had World Editor so I could just build three or four variations and then copy-paste them around. Instead, I had to hand-build every single tree. But despite my complaining, it needed to be done. So, I got to work and started making trees. And more trees. And more trees. And more trees. If I never see a Minecraft tree again, it will be too soon. After that ordeal, the exterior of the build is fully complete. I think it looks great so far, but we're not done yet. There's still all the interior to do. Earlier I mentioned what some of the rooms will be, but let's go into more detail. There's going to be a throne room with steampunk clockwork and a grand chandelier. There will also be a laboratory since Dream needs a place to conduct his evil experiments. More clockwork will be featured here, along with a couple of references to Dream's personal picks on the last two Minecraft mob votes, and that mysterious Dream XD reference I've been talking about. Then there will be a transformation of the disc vault from the Ark where Dream corner Tommy and Tubbo before being taken to prison. This will feature all the items he planned on getting in order to control various members of the server, including the prize discs themselves. Finally, there will be a dungeon. Its design is inspired by Pandora's Vault, although I'm not exactly the redstone genius that awesome dude is. I am, of course, starting with the throne room. This will basically be the heart of the build, since you have to pass through here to access almost any other room. Because of this, I want to stay true to the theme and use a green color palette. Lime green would have been a bit too neon bright, however, 
so I go for alternating stripes of green concrete and green terracotta. I add an erased platform for the throne, then get to work on the clockwork elements I mentioned earlier. There's going to be some giant gears on this back wall. Once we get to the laboratory, we'll finally learn why this clockwork symbolism is so important to the build. The throne room is complete. Dream may prefer using his power to puppeteer from the shadows, but he also has a god complex, so I doubt he'd object to being seated on his very own throne. Back at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I am doing full interiors. That's still true, but a lot of these are just your regular castle-y type rooms, plus there's over 30 rooms in total in this build. It would take absolutely forever to do a time-lapse of each of them, so instead I just picked a few of my favorites to show you on the screen right now. However, we'll still get to see the process of building the laboratory, disc vault, and dungeons, since these three are the most important to Dream's character. It's finally time to get started on the laboratory. I need to do the basics first, like framing the windows, building the balcony, making doors, and putting in staircases. Once I've done this, I get to work on one of the most important features of the room. I'm building a giant statue of Dream XD. I wanted to put a Dream XD reference in this build somewhere, and I took inspiration from Foolish Gamer's own statue that he made on the Dream SMP. Obviously, his is a lot bigger than mine, but I needed to make something that could still fit in the laboratory. This statue is essential to the lore of the castle. The people who created this place worship Dream XD. As we found out in the latest Tales from the SMP stream, XD has ties to time traveling, and resides in his own dimension filled with giant clockwork gears. So the people that made this castle weren't just adding in clockwork because they liked the look of it. They're including it as a symbol of their god, a god who has some mysterious connection to Dream himself, given the Resurrection book. No wonder this place makes a perfect lair for him. What was likely once a sanctuary for worshipping XD has now become Dream's laboratory. If you look around, you can see a tank for a glow squid, some attempts at constructing a copper golem, and various end blocks, despite the ban on going to the end. I wonder how he would have gotten his hands on these. There's also a few green glass specimen containers for some of Dream's more... questionable... experiments. Now I'm going to tackle the transformation of the disc vault. The original was a big part of Dream SMP lore, where the server banded together to take Dream down. It was a vital location for Dream's character, so I can hardly make a lair for him without including a vault where he can store all the objects he gathered to control the server. I make a raised platform that looks like Tommy's infamous discs, then start building the pedestals and cages where the items and mobs will be stored. At the back of the vault, I of course make two pedestals to house the very discs themselves. I finalize the lighting around the room, and now the vault is complete. It has a very moody atmosphere, and I use lots of obsidian, since that's the material Dream went for when building it on his server. The final room left to build is the dungeon. Dream would likely want to keep a close eye on his enemies. He is the one who had Pandora's vault built, after all. Also, he'd need a place to keep any captives that he's using as test subjects in his laboratory. We already know he's experimented with the revival book, so what else is he up to? I need to make some actual cells for the dungeon. There's going to be a lava curtain between the cells and the main corridor, to keep things extra secure. As I mentioned before, I was inspired by the look of Pandora's vault when creating this part of the build. That means lots of obsidian, lava, and blackstone. I even added in my own redstone, although it's got nothing on Awesome Dude's mastery. I put a giant gargoyle head on the back wall, since it matched the theme well, plus I thought it would look cool to have lava pouring out of its mouth. And with that, Dream's evil lair is finally complete.
thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and leave a like. I plan to do more mega builds for Dream SMP characters, so please, show your support for the channel. That way, I can continue making epic builds like... Dream, what the- <laughs>